The scripture for this evening is in the gospel according to John, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Chances are that when I say the phrase, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, it's not necessarily a positive image that comes to mind, is it? Most of the time when we use the phrase, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, we're talking about kind of an underhanded deal, a shady business transaction, perhaps an unscrupulous person looking only for personal gain, not wanting to help someone else unless he himself will get something out of it. I'll do something for you if you will do something for me. Quid pro quo, you know, it's how the world works. If you do me a favor, I'll do you one. Oftentimes we we think about that phrase in the negative, but I've been thinking about that phrase all week long as I've been getting ready for tonight. When this scripture comes up, it always shocks me. It always astonishes me to read about Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. It should be a shocking scripture every time we read it. It should jar us. It should surprise us. It should even offend us. It's a bit scandalous to think of the Lord of all kneeling down in front of his students, his disciples, his followers, and washing their feet for them. Foot washing isn't a a desirable job. It's kind of nasty, no matter how you look at it. When the job opening comes available, they don't get many resumes submitted for the job of foot washer. It was worse in Jesus' day. I mean, you think about how stinky our feet are now. But we get to drive around places. We get to wear shoes with toes 
on them, although, you know, summer's right around the corner. But we're talking about people who walked everywhere and in dusty, uh, dusty and dirty streets and, and wore sandals all the time. And, and you know, when you've, when you've been outside all day long messing around in your flip-flops, you know how it gets all ground in there and the, underneath the toenails and it's just not a very pleasant job any way you look at it. In Jesus' day, this would have been a job for, for the lowliest uh, of servants. And you think about Jesus doing this job, of all jobs, doing this job, the rabbi, the teacher, the master in front of the servant. Their superior, he's not supposed to be doing that. Think of Jesus as Messiah, the one who God has anointed and sent into this world to announce the good news of salvation. This Messiah, this chosen one of God, kneeling down, wrapped in a towel, washing the dirt off of people's feet. Jesus, Emmanuel, God incarnate, the Word of God, the Logos made flesh, Jesus Himself, kneeling, serving. However you look at it, it doesn't make sense. It's counterintuitive. It's, it's wrong on so many levels. It should shock us. It should offend us. It should jar us. And then add to that what Jesus says at the end when he's done. As I have washed your feet, so you ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Wash one another's feet. Now that's kind of an awkward picture, isn't it? I mean, you have to have pretty good balance to wash one another's feet. Who stoops down first? Do you both kneel? Do you? Of course not. You take turns. (laughs) You take turns. And when your feet are dirty, you allow someone else to serve you. And when someone else's feet are dirty, you serve them. You take turns serving one another. We don't wash feet anymore. It's not necessary in our culture. Some churches do have ceremonial foot washing services, taking that instruction Jesus gives quite seriously. Same with uh, every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. That's a, a command given us by Christ. Go into the world and baptize all nations, that baptism command from Christ. People elevate this one to the same level and, and have foot washing services but for me and from my perspective what we need to take from this scripture is more of a demeanor an attitude of service a posture of humility toward one another we are supposed to outdo one another in showing honor we are supposed to out humble our neighbor we are supposed to serve one another as Jesus set the example And so our attitude toward one another must be as servants of one another, must be as servants of the servant, mutually humble, reciprocal servanthood. I will scratch your back, and you will scratch mine, and it's a good thing. We serve others when they need it, and we allow ourselves to be served when we need it. It's not, I'll serve you if and only if you will serve me. It's not a what's in it for me kind of approach. It's what we all do together. It's what followers of Jesus do. Would you still serve? Would you still give if you knew you weren't going to get anything in return, if it was just an attitude, if it was just a demeanor, if it was just who we were? Servants, humble before one another, humble before the world. 
You see, too often the question of what's in it for me prevents us from serving in the way Christ wants us to serve. Too often the question of, yeah, but it would be risky. Yeah, but I might lose something. Yeah, but I wouldn't gain anything in return. Yeah, but, yeah, but. And we end up preventing ourselves from living the lives Christ wants us to live. An attitude of service. Kneeling. Humble in front of one another. Sometimes it's hard for us to serve another person when we don't think we're going to get anything in return. But on the other hand, it can be equally hard for us to allow ourselves to be served when we truly need it. Sometimes our pride gets in the way of that. Sometimes our self-assurance gets in the way of that and we think, well, we don't need help. We can make it on our own. That, again, is not the way Christ calls us to live. You know as well as I do that there are times in our lives that we just need help. We just need someone to give us a hand. We just need a little help. To be able to allow yourself to be served with humility, with grace, with love, that's a part of what it means to follow Jesus as well. Serve one another. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Tonight as we share in this Last Supper, on this, the the night that we remember Christ's Last Supper with his disciples, we will serve one another the elements. We will all come forward by the center aisle. There will be two serving stations and you'll just take a piece of bread out of the basket and you'll take a cup of juice out of the tray. Partake of communion right there and then throw your cup away in that basket and then what you will do is you'll take that basket. The person serving bread will hand you the basket and you'll turn around and you'll offer that basket up to the next person behind you in the line. And that process will just repeat as we serve one another this Holy Communion tonight. We're called to serve one another. We're called to kneel. We're called to this reciprocal servanthood. To outdo one another in showing honor. To love one another as Christ loves us. Would you pray with me please? Give us an attitude of servanthood, Almighty God. Show us what it means to have a demeanor of service and humility toward one another. Help us, God, to serve, to share, to give without expecting anything in return. And help us to allow ourselves to be helped, to be served when we need it. Remove that pride and that that pretension and that, that arrogance that sometimes prevents us from receiving help from others. Show us how to be your church, how to be your disciples, how to serve you, the servant of all. It is to you in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen.